Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa and I am The Crafty Author and this is our sew along and today we're gonna do more of just kind of a sewing chat. And I'm gonna try something a little bit new here, so hang on a second. Um, as you can hear, I'm very stuffed up. I'm not sick. I think it's allergies. Um, they have been really, really bad today. Hi, Jackie. So I felt kind of, kind of crummy and I just woke up from a nap. So there's that. <laughs> That's why I don't look like I'm my best. So I am going to try to watch your comments on my tablet while I'm talking to you. So let me know, hi Candy, if you guys get any feedback or anything like that, because I certainly hope you don't. I don't have the sound on on my iPad. Well, I can see that it's moving. Okay, I'll stop. I will stop. Um, anyway. <laughs> well, Jackie, you know, it was kind of nice. I wish I had was taking it under some better circumstances, but what is the correct measurements for a big fellow for a mask? Oh, Miranda, I really don't know. Um, is the 10, uh, what I would do, this is the original mask that I had made. Um, so the measurements here are 10 by eight and that includes a seam allowance. So that will make it nine and a half by seven and a half. I would increase it by an inch. So for a bigger, a bigger fella, I would try 11 by nine. I hope that helps you. I made some bigger masks. Um, I'll show you what I did actually. Uh, so I'll show you what I did all weekend. It was good fun times. You see all those? For, oh, a big chin. Um, I would... Wow, because you want it to fit tighter around here. Um, depending on how big they are in the face, I think you're going to have to play with that one, to be honest, Miranda. I would try I would try taking it up in increments of by an inch just to see how that works, but you're going to kind of have to play with that. I'm sorry, I just don't have the correct measurement for that at all. Um, you might even want to try 12 by 10. You're welcome. I really do apologize. I wish I had better news. Yeah, my husband hates the cloth ties, so I'm going to show you what my husband came up with. Okay? I'm going to show you on my mask actually. So now's, now's a good time for me just to show you. So there's elastic here and this might work better for the bigger guys, Miranda. And then here, but the problem, I'll tell you what the issue is with these masks. Hi Beatrice, is that you have to get these, you have to get the elastic cut the right size. <laughs> So we play, I did many of these. I played with them a lot. So this mask goes on like this. So you put both the elastic around your face and then you pull it down. And you pull it up. And these are really, really awesome masks. I'm not gonna lie, I love it. You get a good fit, tight fit here. You get a good tight fit here. It's really a wonderful way to make a mask. My husband came up with it. 
I, and I, I really, I like it a lot, okay? I mean, it does smoosh my nose a little bit, but, you know, it's snug along there, so you don't, you're not getting all that whatever, you know, because I wear glasses, and I'm going to tell you right now, I've tried everything. I've tried floral wire, I have tried pipe cleaners, and it doesn't matter what I stick in here. If I make a little pocket to go on the bridge of my nose, nothing stops the steaming up of my glasses, okay? So, if you can figure that out, then I say more power to you. I'm not able to do it. And I will be honest, when I go to like the doctor's office or whatnot, and I have to wear a mask because, you know, I have cold or because I'm a germaphobe and I just wear a mask anyway. It's a true story. Um, hi, Wendy. Uh, so what I do is, um, even there, you know, they have those masks where you can pinch it down along your nose. I still can't see because of my glasses. So if you are a glass wearer, glasses wearer, you're going to have steaming up no matter what. It's just, it's just a fact of life. So I pull mine down just a little bit on my nose, just to about like here. That keeps it from steaming up and I can actually see where I'm going and, and whatnot. But that's what I do with mine. Now, as you can see, this little mask, I just made this. This is my Tula pink mask. I had to have that purple monkey. Ooh, I love it. I just wish that that purple monkey hadn't been on the edge of the fabric, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So there's that. I love this mask. I love it. Oh, I bet they do, Beatrice. Uh, Cricut has a pattern for the Olsen masks. I haven't made any of those, um, but that's my that's a mask here. So my husband had me make him one of these. So the elastic on the top here needs to be bigger than the elastic on the bottom here. But these are really easy and fast to sew and I like the way they fit over your face. It just really, really snug, like it's not going anywhere. Here's another one that I made today, another Tula Pink uh, mask. Hi, Natalie. with elastic that fits over this one right here again is nice and snug okay nice and snug along my face the other one is tighter because it goes around you know your head but um this works great too so and i'm only going to be wearing these to go to the grocery store to go out you know or i guess if i go to work but um we won't be going anywhere for a while, I don't think. So, there's that one. This one has a, a ladybugs on them, all different colored little ladybugs. <laughs> I think they're so much fun. They're so much fun. So, my question is, would you like to see a tutorial on how I made the one that goes over my head? Like this one like this would you like to see a tutorial on this because if you would oh no wendy not the internet again okay miranda i will do that and like i said the back of this is um really really i'll do i'll do a video for probably tomorrow okay and put it up sometime tomorrow um on how to do the mask like this so be on the lookout for this okay but you will have to play with the measurements of your, um, what is that? Elastic. My husband's was much bigger, of course. And this mask size fits him, his face. But the elastic is the key. I'm telling you that right now. That was the key to it. So if you want to make a mask like this, though, I found another easier way. Well, you know, Patty, it is. It is hard to find, you're right. But if you do have elastic, um, it's a good way to use your elastic. So. Wendy, today it was nice and warm, actually. Yeah, 
You know, Patty, instead of using elastic, you could also use, um, you could also tie around as well. You don't have to use elastic. Oh, that's a good question. Exhibit greatness. I can't remember. Okay. Um, so I ordered the Tula Pink fabric from Missouri Star Quilt Company, which is online. So they're shipping items. Um, elastic. I have had elastic in my stash for a very long time. I just have. Okay. Um, and before the stores closed, I was able to go to um, Hobby Lobby. And while I was at Hobby Lobby, I picked up some extra elastic. My mom also had some extra elastic, but I make tutus for little girls. And so I've had big rolls of elastic for a long time. I bought it. So that's how I have so much elastic. Um, so that's why I have all the supplies because I've been stocked up for a long time. I mean, that's just, that's just the honest truth. And it's just now I'm actually getting able to use all of it. The other thing you can also use is ribbon. You can also use ribbon. You can make your own bias binding for this one. You can make your own bias binding, tie it around, do the same down here. You get real creative with stuff. I've done some of that here. I'll show you, I made one. Um, Yes, wider elastic is better to go around the head than around the ears. I have cut my elastic, I cut it straight down. I've had to do that, I've had to get real creative. So my Joann's here, um, yes, Natalie, hair ties also works, good, good idea. Um, I've used a shirt cut up and stripped. Yes, Beatrice, that's right, those work too, the shirt ties, um, shirt strips. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the Joann's here. I've tried to place an order at Joann's here in Colorado and there is absolutely, it says, well, you can order and do curbside pickup. But every time I try to place an order for curbside pickup, it's like, no, no, not available at your store. So I finally gave up on it and I started ordering stuff from Missouri Star. It took it, I paid for the extra expedited shipping because I didn't want to wait forever and I needed to get these masks made for my daughter and her co-workers um and it came fine it was it it got here I mean I think it was delayed by maybe a day or two but nothing nothing you know too bad so yeah as sewers you guys we're gonna have to get real creative on stuff that we're doing you know especially since supplies are low and I went to order more of the little clips that we use our little sewing quilting clips. They're, they're all out. You, they won't ship until June on Amazon. And I was like, well, I guess I'm just not gonna get those right at the moment. So, you know, I mean, it's affecting everybody. So I was just lucky I had a stash. <laughs> Honestly, I who would have thought? I told my husband he should be thanking me for buying all that stuff. Remember when he was giving me troubles about that? I told him to be be happy. So this is one that I made that I showed you guys a couple weeks ago with the ribbons. Okay, so I can't remember what I told you how wide the ribbon is, but I'll tell you here. And I didn't do this one really right. Um because you really want to make sure that the ribbon up top is longer than the ribbon on the bottom and I made them even. So this ribbon is about 25 inches long up top and the same for the bottom just because I made it even. But I'll show you how this works. So if you don't have elastic and you do have thin ribbon or you do have, um, which my dinger, a bias tape, it should work. I'm not sure how that cut um, elastic is going to work either. My suggestion is not to put it in the dryer. Just wash it, let it air dry. This one has a, uh, 
whatchamacallit in it as well. What do you need, CJ? What? Stay safe, all you cool cats and kittens. Oh, cool cats and kittens. Oh, this is Christian's mask. I made him one. He got one of the puppy ones. How do you like it, Chris? I love it. I used it today when I went to the store. Awesome sauce. Okay, I'm trying. I'm having a hard time. Just bear with me. These guys. are awesome. So this is the ribbon one. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this one has the, like I said, this one has the little pocket that I sewed in there. I just want you to get up and close and see that with the, uh, oh, doggone it, pipe cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is the one that ties with the ribbons okay got a good fit over here and a good fit over here now remember none of these are medical grade masks I mean, these are just masks that we're making to protect ourselves from, you know, when we go out. Oh, look at this. See, I told you, nothing works. It all gets all steamy in there. Ooh, Beatrice, nice. Does it work really well? Oh, wow. She got it in a week. That's lucky, Wendy. 50 for $42. Heck no. Awesome, Beatrice. I may have to try that. Wow. Jackie, that's a lot of money. I'll, I'll just be waiting until they come back in stock on Amazon. I'm too cheap. I'm too cheap to pay that. So I will tell you. I paid that for my, I'm sorry, I gotta take this off. I'm itchy. So just be, okay, so if you do make one of these with the ties, make sure that you uh, don't make it as long as I did. It just makes it a little harder to, I'm gonna end up cutting these ribbons. They're gonna become much shorter, trust me. They're a pain in the butt, too long. But I didn't know when I made it, I didn't know. So, practice, practice, practice. I feel like that's all I do is practice. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I did. I waited. Um, I decided I'd wait. Oh, I was going to tell you those, those clover clips. I shouldn't have said clover clips. Quilt clips. That's what they are, quilt clips. <laughs> I bought a bag of them a while back. And I paid a lot of money for them. And then I found the little tin can one full of like a hundred of them. And I got those for $6.99 at Christmas. What? Seriously, Natalie? 15 bucks? Oh, thank you, the crafter's place. Yes. Thank you for that tip. So if you're using pipe cleaners, make sure that you hand wash the masks because they'll ball up in the washer. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> oh, Miranda. <laughs> uh, my craft room just went through a major overhaul in January. I have videos on it. You should check them out. It's pretty crazy. Um, and it normally looks like a war zone in here. I'm, I'm serious. This is really cleaned up. Um, I cleaned it up actually before I came on here, which was why I was a little bit late too, because I didn't want you guys to see it look like a tornado went through here. <laughs> My husband says I'm an anal freak about stuff, so, and he might be right, but still, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I have to have a clean workspace. I normally, I'll tell you what, 
there is normally fabric like piled up over here. If you've been with me for a while, you'll, you'll see it. You'll start to see things pile up everywhere around here. And then you'll be like, huh. Oh. Uh, Natalie. Um, I shop. Hi, Peggy. I'm from Denver, Colorado. Welcome. Um, I shop at Joann's. I shop at Hobby Lobby. I shop at Missouri Star Quilt Company. I shop at local quilt companies or quilt stores that are here in Colorado. I also, um, Jordan Fabrics is a, another good one. They do a lot of pre-cuts. Um, I also have one, uh, a local quilt store that's right up the street from me. So I go there too a lot. I just kind of grab my fabric from wherever I can get it. But most of this fabric is from um, Joann's most of it because I can buy it like a lot at a time and I love to buy fabric when it's on sale. Just ask my husband. <laughs> uh, so how wide, uh, Patty, you asked how wide my mask is before I pleat it. Um, so normally it's 10 by eight, 10 inches by eight inches. And I use a quarter inch seam in that. So the seam is, is already accounted for in this pattern. I have since modified my pattern. That one is on my website if you want to go and look at it. It comes also with um, the two panels for a filter. This one has room where you can stick a filter on the inside of it okay so if you're looking for something like that I would recommend that the newest ones that I have made which I will be showing you tomorrow are a different size pattern they are nine by seven thank you Peggy I know I hate to do anything that messes it up too <laughs> So nine by seven, and I'm just cutting cardboard or um, cardstock, and I just make a pattern, and then I put it on the fabric, and I just cut it in the pieces. So three layers for this. Three layers of cotton is what I use for, for this nine by seven. These Yeah, I'll just show you these. These are so cute. You guys are going to... They're really cute. Yes, a cereal box will also work. That's a great idea. These are the masks that I made for my daughter and her co-workers. As you know, my daughter works for um, a veterinary clinic, emergency vet medicine, and they are in need of masks. And instead of putting... A filter in here there's three layers of fabric so I'll just show you this is nine by seven and this is too big on my face actually so it'll fit a bigger face it's all the elastic will I have to wash this one now the elastic will um, it depends on how big, big you make the elastic too for adults. Yep. You know what? The whole thing with these masks is, you guys, is that everybody has a different sizing system for them. Not one size does not fit all. Okay. So that's, I mean, you just kind of, you're kind of guessing is my, is what I'm trying to say. Like the 10 by eight, is too big for my face. I have a small face. I also have a small head. So if somebody were to make me a mask that's, you know, what they consider a standard size, it would be way too big for me and I would have to make adjustments to it. It's just the way it is, okay? So it's like that for anybody. Some people have a much larger head. Some people just, they have a standard sized head or a standard sized face and that's going to fit on there perfectly. 
So you just kind of do the best you can do, you know? And um, yeah, they probably are more versatile, Peggy. I would imagine that's probably true, but everybody that I know, so I will say this, my daughter who works in vet medicine, I made her one of those with the tie, like what I showed you that I put on. And she asked me to make her ones with elastic because it doesn't stay up all day while she's working. She constantly has to keep tying it. So in that case, she needs the elastic either over the ears or over the head like I showed you. Hi, Glenda. And Peggy, yes, we are. Mask makers are awesome. Um, right, I do too. So, but when you don't have, you know, stuff to work with, you got to make do. It's like, you know, it's like I was saying. Hi, Gwen. Oh, that's very sweet. Your mom's going to love it. Dorothy, thank you. Um, so I just think that, you know, you do the best that you can do. And we're doing these because we love people and because we love our relatives. And do we want them to fit tight? Yes, we absolutely do. But we're also not, we're not miracle workers. And without being able to go and measure each person's face, we're kind of, we're kind of guessing and making a one size fits all type of, type of deal. So that's where I'm at with it. Um, I made one for my grandson. I made it much smaller. Um, his was... Because he's, he's three. So are you looking for pink, pink camel, Pam? Wow. Peggy, that's awesome. Pam, I would try Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um... You might also want to try, oh, what's that other one? Paddocks? Is that what it is? Hancocks of Paddocks? It's online. You might want to try Joanne's too. Joanne's online might have it. There you go, Miranda. Okay, so take those. So with those measurements, I would add two inches to each. Um, you've got to allow for seam allowance, and then you want to also for the elastic and stuff. And maybe purple. Um, yeah, I would try, actually, I would try Missouri Star Quilt Company. I think I've seen pink camo there before. That's smart, Jackie. Very smart. Yep. Have your family, your daughter, or your son measure. That's a good idea. <laughs> Miranda, you're cracking me up. <laughs> oh, Paducas. Okay, Paducas. Thank you, Peggy and Jackie. <laughs> I know you love it, Miranda. That's funny. Hey, we have to poke fun at them sometimes, right? Pineapple fabrics. I've never even heard of them. How have I not heard of pineapple fabrics? And, oh, yeah, I forgot about So Yeah Quilting. So it looks like a lot of people are saying Hancock's of Paducah. I'm going to go look at Hancock's of Paducah and order a bunch of fabric. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be fun. My husband's going to cry. Okay, anyway. So look at these. So these are all for the staff and for my daughter and all her little friends. Look at all those. These are all the dog paw ones. I ordered this from Missouri Star. So they actually asked me when I placed my order from Missouri Star if any of this fabric was going to be used for masks. And I was like, yep. So I'm going to have them take a picture of themselves in the fabric and send it to Missouri Star. All right, let's see here. There's a bunch more gather them up. Oh, you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. How funny. It's weird seeing myself over here and over here. Mm 
Now, some of these have different backings, of course. And there's this one. There's this print. Just the little paw prints, and I used bubbles on the inside. So these are doubled up with this bubble fabric, as you can see. Um, For a beginner, actually, I recommend... Even if you weren't a beginner, I would tell you, um, this is the back side of the, the paw mask. Thank you. Um, I would use uh, ging ginger scissors. Where are mine? Hang on, I'll go get them and I'll show you what they look like. Sorry about that. These are Ginger scissors. They come with the blade protector and these can be sharpened. These are extremely sharp fabric scissors. They are fantastic. I love them and I highly, highly recommend them. I bought those scissors, I think two or three years ago and I've never had, I haven't had to sharpen them yet. Um, and they're still super sharp. And they also, why is my iron plugged in? Because I'm a goof. Um, yeah, I love those scissors. Those are, highly recommend them. Who's most, Gwen, who is most are? It does, Peggy. It becomes much easier. Absolutely. My favorite iron is my Oliso iron. I love that iron. Um, I used to have one that was blue. Well, I still have one that's blue. But um, my pink one, it has a, it has more steam in it. It gets a little hotter. So I do love that one, but I use that one all the time. And then I have a mini pink Oliso too that my mom got me for Christmas. And um, I use that for smaller projects. Those are probably my two favorite. They work the best for quilting. Yes, Peggy, it does leak sometimes. It leaks mostly when I put too much water in it, is what I have found. So, like, when I was making these masks, I was getting a little bit carried away, and I put too much water in the um, iron and just overfilled it just a little bit, and it did leak out. Other than that, I don't really have too many... Oh, no, mine doesn't leak when it's turned off. I would contact them and let them know that that's happening. Because that doesn't sound right to me. I was going to show you these guys. Here's some more. Aren't those cute with the little dogs? Oh, they're so cute. And these all have different backs on them. <laughs> These ones were the ones I started out with first. Thank you. Yeah, I started out with these first. See that? And then I got better at it as I went along. And then these are smaller ones that I made. So I made these ones with the way that I did my first video originally. And then I found an easier way to start doing this. Wow, 35 years. Those are awesome. Yes, Miranda, that is the iron that lifts up by itself. It's awesome. Bert, 35 years. They're great scissors. I did not know that mask making was tax deductible, but thank you, Peggy. I should know that. I used to be an accountant. <laughs> should know best. Oh, well, the small, the small Oliso iron. I think you should. I love mine. I think it's great. 
Are you asking me how long it takes me to make a mask from start to finish? It took me probably about 12 hours to make all of those. 12 hours to make them in bulk. Ah, Peggy, great minds think alike. Yes, so one mask, once you get it down, once you get your system down. So what I finally started doing, um, so these ones, when I made my original ones, each mask probably took me about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, about 10 minutes. But that was after I had everything cut and ready to go. I had everything, I just, I cut everything in advance, okay? Elastic, fabric, um, and I was ready to go. But then I started sewing with this method. And this took me, these took me about five minutes to sew each one. And I'll show you why. I'm going to show you why. So I took two pieces of fabric. I cut them. I, I had this in, um, in yardage. And I cut it nine by seven. Okay. And then I got two of my elastic, elastic strips here. And what I did was these are cut at seven inches. So these elastic for over the ears are seven inches each. And what I did was instead of sitting there and fiddling with pinning everything and clipping everything to make it fit on, I sewed those on first, just straight down and they, I marked them half inch down. You might even be able to see my pen mark right there, right there. So, um, so then I sewed those down and I had a stack of these. And then when I was ready, I took my, my main nine by seven piece. I put it face down. I sewed from right here all the way around. Hi, Bettina. All the way around back to about here. And then I left an opening here about this big, turned it inside out, sewed that up after I, of course, turned it out, and then I top stitched all the way around. That's how we got this. Pretty easy. Takes about five minutes once you have your system down in place and you're just going. You just go, 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 go. So yeah, it took me about 12 hours to make all of those masks. And you have to also understand, I stopped in between. I went and I had, I ate lunch. And then um, I, on the first day, I didn't really start on these right away. I started on something else that I'll show you. Um, but I ate lunch and then I made masks for my son and my husband. And then I made myself one. And actually the plates are easy to do. So in my new one i will show you how to do it it's it's really really easy you guys you can actually sit at the sewing machine and cut, create the pleats and just sew it down if you want to once you get a system going but um for these i mostly made the pleats oh <laughs> i was originally doing three christine i have gone to the two um, I think it makes it a lot, a lot easier and it turns out the same. I mean, you're still getting the, the plate, you know, you're still getting that. So yeah, so I will do another video for you guys. I don't know how many videos I can do on mask making. <laughs> People are going to be like, come on lady. Um, but I do want to show you how to make, how to do that, you know, easier, or maybe we'll just do it in a live. I don't know. Mine get stuck at the pleats. Okay. And Jackie, as many as I want. 
That's right. <laughs> um, whatever helps people, right? They can pick and choose whichever method helps them make the best. That, that's my motto. Just pick what works for you, you know? So yeah, I'll get that up for you guys tomorrow and you can check it out. And I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to like it way, actually way better. I really do. Cause you're not, you're not having to thread the elastic through here. And although I do like the way these masks fit, um, yeah, that elastic is kind of a pain in the butt. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't like threading elastic through stuff. So, and when you're making a lot of masks, you want to be able to just do it and be done with it. And so I think this is great for making like masks for yourself or your family. If you're just going to make a couple. And I think this method is awesome if you're going to make a bunch of them. And so we'll mass produce and I'll show you how. Yeah, I think we are going to have to wear masks for a while, Peggy. So, I, you know what I say? Let's, let's make it an easy process and let's protect our families and our friends and our community. And, you know, we can make it easy on ourselves too. And sew some cool, up, cool masks. You know who says they have to be ugly looking? We can make them look so cute. <laughs> I'm all about the cute. So, I mean, I'm going to walk around with Tula Pink masks. So, I tried to get my husband to wear one. He was like, no way. Mm -mm. No. No, it's not going to happen. He's like, you keep your purple monkeys. I said, okay, that's cool. So, I wanted to show you the big ones because I made some really big ones. Miranda, you're going to love this. Yes, masks will be mandatory. Yes, Becca, I got my Tula Pink and I'm going to show it all to you. Yeah, you know, guys, I really, I haven't gone into a store without a mask on. Even since this began, I just, you know, I, I'm not going to risk it. I don't want to make somebody sick. You know, I just don't want to get somebody sick. I know it's not 100% protection that you're going to keep it from them and they're going to keep it from you. But by golly, you know, let's be smart about it. Even if you don't agree with everything that's, you know, going on and whatnot, because a lot of people don't. Um, you still exercise smart because you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> so anyway, that's my... That's my advice for the day. Wear a mask. I will say I was wearing gloves. I don't wear gloves though. I only wore gloves just to touch the buggy because I would push the cart and my husband would put the groceries in the basket. Um, we won't do that from now on. Now I'll just keep my hand sanitizer and sit there and squeeze everywhere. Aw, Peggy, that's awesome. Oh, the big one. Here's the big one, Miranda. This is really big and it has that, it goes over your head, okay? Your husband would probably love this. Then this one is a wider one too for a bigger person. See, I'm gonna have to wash these. Um, but I wanted to show you the bigger ones because I did make some really big ones in case somebody did have a big face. And I'm gonna tell you the measurements. So this one is, So this one was made with the 10 by, um, the 10 by eight. Okay. Three layers of fabric. So 10 by eight, two pleats, and you're going to sew this inside and out. And I don't know how long this is. My guess is that this top one is 14 and this bottom one is probably 13 or 12. This one was also made, it's all in how you're pleating it and what you're using. So this one, these, this elastic here is cut at 12 inches. So this will go around a bigger person's face. 
but the pattern that I used was 10 by eight for these. I hope that helps. Hang on, guys. Stop doing this to me. Okay. Oh, Miranda, I spelled your name wrong. I'm so sorry. Doggone it. So, um, so Miranda, I put the link down here in the description box. I apologize for spelling your name wrong. Um, but you can click on that link and it'll take you to the pattern for this. Okay. Okay. And then, um, Jackie, no, it does not have an opening on the back. Yes. You can, Becca is right, um, you can cut knit elastic to any width and it will not fray. That is true. Um, Sophie is home from her walk. She's going to run down here and get excited and greet us. I'm just forewarning you ahead of time. Sophie is my dog, for those of you who do not know. She's a black lab, mixed with crazy, but we love her. And she's super spoiled. Oh, she's super spoiled. Okay, so she gets, okay, Miranda. <laughs> let me know if you have any more questions okay um she gets a bark box every month and she knows when that box arrives and she goes crazy for it oh well, next month is gonna be a scooby-doo box i'm telling you that dog is spoiled beyond belief real spoiled girl but we love her so Okay, so that is it for the masks. I will work on masks for tomorrow's tutorial so that we all have that. All right, next, my toolbox. Remember my toolbox that I got at Harbor Freight and I told you my husband was right because it was only like $5.99 and well, you know, I like to spend lots of money on little containers for my craft room. All right, I don't know, I can't believe she's not down here yet. I need a haircut too. This hair is like, oh, I need my haircut. So I played with my Cricut on Saturday and I came up with something really cute and I was gonna do Snoopy and Woodstock, but I couldn't get the file correct. So I did something a little different and I went with, Oh, Becca, that's right. You are brave. You let him cut your hair. I'm thinking about letting uh, Brandon cut mine here because it's getting way too long, except for my hair is in an A-line and I'm afraid to let him cut it because he will like chop, chop it off. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> okay, ready? You're not gonna be surprised. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh gosh, I, you know what, Jackie, I would trust my husband to cut it before I'd let my daughter cut it. How terrible is that? <laughs> my daughter, oh, I don't think she could do it. I, I would trust my sister to do it. My daughter, I don't know if you guys have seen my daughter. She is, my daughter, <laughs> I know Jackie, it's terrible. <laughs> My daughter is my mini me, for real. She looks like my identical twin. People even, Facebook, when it does its recognition for faces on, um, you know, on your photos and stuff, yeah, it tags me as Ashley. So, yeah, we look an awful lot alike. But she has got, she's got, really beautiful blue eyes and her hair is much lighter than mine 
but she has, um, and she's way skinnier than I am. I'll, I'm going to throw that out there right now. She's way skinnier than her mother, but, um, she has the most beautiful hair you have ever seen. It is super thick and it's long and it's beautiful. And yeah, she's a beautiful girl. She's amazing. She's got a heart of gold too. She, she really does. Both my kids do. I'm so very proud of both of my kids. They're amazing people. They really are. They're very kind and um, they just, they're very good people. All right, Jackie, I'll see you tomorrow and you have a great day too. So yes, Hello Kitty went on this box instead of Snoopy and Woodstock. Uh, I'm happy with the way it turned out. It turned out really cute. And then this is my other little box where I put my little quilt clips and I put this little sewing machine on it. I thought that was cute. It's, so this is vinyl and um, premium vinyl. And I just cut this out with my Cricut and weeded it and put it on here. You were so desperate. <laughs> Becca, isn't that cute? I know when I saw that, I was like, oh, that is so cute. And that's a design in design space in uh, for Cricut. It's a free one. And um, right, Bettina, yes, definitely wear a mask because they won't let us in anywhere. So true. Okay, we're gonna move on to the Tula Pink. You ready? Not too, this part isn't too exciting. Tula Pink. Those are just regular um, five inch charm squares, um, the solids. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, shall we open them and take a look? So that we can look at all the beautiful bright colors because I love Tula Pink. All right, here we go. There's that. Look at all those neat colors. Oh, goodness. Oh, the rainbow. Colors of the rainbow. They're so vibrant. Uh, no, Peggy Cricut is actually really easy to operate and it's a lot of fun. You need to finish yours, Linda. Uh, Glenda, the Cricut Maker is the one that cuts fabric. Oh, I know. I am so excited about these. Ooh -wee. Even more excited about these. Ready? Set. Oh, look at all those polka dots. Look at that. Stripes. Oh, you guys, I'm excited about these. I love them. I can't wait to make something cool with them. Something really cool. <laughs> I know I love Tula Pink. I, you know what? Now that I've seen it in person, totally addicted. I'm going to order more. I know it's bad, right? But I know I can't decide what I want to do. So I, I, yeah, zero pinked edges. Exactly. Oh my gosh. That is so amazing. Right? So I don't even have to worry about that. I hate pinked edges. Um, I have a, uh, <gasps> yay, Christine. So what I'm going to do I don't know, maybe as I get closer to using some of this, I'll put up um, a poll of which design I should do it in because I actually have, when will what stop? Linda, when will what stop? I'll put up a poll and put um, the design my AccuQuilt. I think I'm going to use my AccuQuilt to cut some of these up. When will it start? Oh, Linda. Linda needs encouragement, ladies and gents. 
Linda, just, you just can't be afraid. You've got to just jump in and do it. You got to just jump in and do it. Practice. What are you afraid of? Is it free motion quilting? Is it actually putting the quilt together? Which one? What is it that you're afraid of most? Oh, I love mine too, Bettina. No, Peggy, I've never been and I want to go. And actually, my husband was going to send me on a retreat there this summer. <laughs> of all the summers. Because <laughs> he went on a trip to Arizona to see his dad on a golf trip with the guys. And, um, there you go. You're needing a mask. Yeah, Christine, it does, right? It makes it so easy. Uh, Pam, I don't know when we're going to stop needing a mask. I think we're going to need them for a while. Yeah, absolutely, Linda. I think we can't wait. Somebody can send you a mask. I can send you a mask. And no, yeah, and don't be afraid of sewing. Absolutely, Peggy. You're afraid of them. So you need a mask? Is that what you need, Linda? The Missouri Star Quilter. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's the other Tula fabric. Okay, Linda, if you need a mask, then I need you to... Are you on Facebook, Linda? Look at all the pretties. I can't pull them all out. Okay. Linda. Oh, honey, we're all afraid of that dumb virus. Look at those bananas, how cool those are. So that's the other Tula. Okay, Linda. Um, so if you're on Facebook, I want you to go into... Um, are you in my, <sighs> Linda, do me a favor. I'm going to put something down here for you and I want you to email me your address, your mailing address. Okay. try this again. Yay. So Linda, it is thecraftyauthor at gmail.com. So if you email me your mailing address there, I'll get, a, I'll get some masks sent out to you, okay? Don't be scared. Everything's going to be all right. We'll get you taken care of, okay? We're all going to get through it. Everything's going to be okay. People are scared. 
you know, I mean, it, it is. It's a scary time. It, it is. I've, I've shared with you guys my feelings about being scared as well at times. Um, you know, so I think it hits people at different times. I think it hits people in different ways. And I know for like the first couple of weeks I was fine and I was like, oh, you know, everything's going to be all right. And then kind of as time went on and it started to set in, I think a little bit more, I was like, oh, <laughs> hmm. things got a little bit crazy, <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Um, this is the, I honestly don't know. It'll tell me. It is called a monkey wrench. Yes, turn off the news. Oh, guys, I had to tell my dad to quit watching the news. He was calling me and freaking out because he lives in another state, okay? So he lives in a different state than I do. And um, he would, he, he's reading the paper from here and watching the news. And, oh, I'm so sorry, Pam. That's so heartbreaking. Um, but the, the newspaper has elevated everything and sensationalized it so much that my dad just thought that everybody here in Colorado was basically dying from it. Oh yeah, Dorothy. I love, I love Tula. Um, and so I had to tell him, I was like, stop, you've got to stop. Because I told him, I said, it's not quite the situation that you think it is. I mean, yes, it's bad, but it's not what you think it is. I mean, he was, he thought that I was outside and I don't know what he thought. <laughs> yeah, there sure will be Peggy. Um, So... You just don't know, but yes. All right, next one. So this is backing and it's 108 inches wide. So it's my favorite kind of backing. And this is also monkey, monkey wrench and it's called Don't Slip. Or seriously, Don't Slip. And it's in the color Mango. This is so much fun. Check it out. Oh, oh, love it. It's got all these different colored bananas. Oh my gosh, it's got striped bananas on it. Oh, I love it so much. Yep. So that's my Tula. Oh, yes. There's one more thing that I need to show you guys. I was busy girl this week. And end. <laughs> week and end. Oh, it feels so nice, Becca. Believe it or not, it's really, it's actually really soft. Which I really kind of wasn't expecting. I figured it would be a little bit, you know, more coarse. But it's pretty soft. It's really nice. You know, I could either do... What I'm thinking, what I think would be fun with Tula Pink fabric is Drunkard's Path or um, like in the flower pattern. <laughs> oh, Wendy. <laughs> oh, Peggy, I'm so glad to hear he's doing better. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's maze balls. Highly suggest you go get some. Okay, so here we go. Ready? 
So Friday, I showed you how to make this quilt, but I finished it finally. So for those of you who haven't caught the video of it yet, I'm gonna show you, this was a UFO. Ta -da. This was the UFO that I started back in November, Thanksgiving, and is now complete. And this is the one where I used leftover scraps and stuff to help piece the back of it. So I yarn tied this one. This quilt is huge and it is super warm and I am really loving laying underneath it. And I can tell you right now, my dog loves it too. She's trying to take over this one. So when I lay on the couch, I have to have the scrap quilt on there for her. And now she comes over and lays on this one too. So it's a good thing it's big enough for both of us. So, yeah, this one is, Becca, this one isn't stiff. This one is really, really um, soft. Yes, the bananas are Tula, Peggy. Oh, Beatrice, I am so sorry about your bird. Oh, I know that hurts so bad when our when our pets go. You're in my thoughts and prayers. I know how I know how much that hurts. Thank you, Becca. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. Yeah. So, um, anywho, that's it for me. Um, are any of you guys on Instagram? If you're on Instagram, you can follow me over there too. I don't know if you know that or not. Sometimes I post little snippets. Yes, Miranda, I do. Um, it's actually, if you go to the web link that I sent to you, you'll be able to see it on there. But if you want to wait to find out how to make it the easy way, then wait until tomorrow because I'm going to show the, a different way to do it. Okay. Yeah, and then you'll have two different methods on how to make a mask, and you can choose whichever one you want to try, okay? Okay, sounds good. All right, so if you guys are on Instagram, be sure to go over there and hit follow, and follow me over there. I post stuff on there once in a while. Um, I'll probably be posting a lot of this stuff over there that you've already seen, so... There's that. I'm just being honest. <laughs> but sometimes I post really cool stuff on there too. Pam, I did not free motion quilt this one. But if I were to, I could either straight line this quilt or I could do like a stippling stitch on it. Or I could just kind of use my the pinwheels as a guide to quilt that. I don't know where Sophie is, Becca. She didn't come down here today. I guess she wasn't excited to tell me. <laughs> That's right, Wendy. So the whole purpose on this one really was to just get it finished. And I wanted to... Honestly, I really just wanted to get it off the quilt wall so that I could... Because we're still doing the sawtooth. And... Oh, I need to finish the Sawtooth Star quilt and I need a place to hang it. So I had to get this one off. So, um, but my mom used to make quilts like this when I was a little girl. This is how my mom has always made her quilts. So she would do it uh, right sides facing together, you know, sew it all around and flip it inside out and then she would top stitch and then she would yarn tie. And so that's what I did, I yarn tied instead of quilting and it's just kind of it was nice because it was different you know it's kind of a nice little break um normally I do quilt them with the quilting machine I'm glad I didn't quilt this one to be perfectly honest it's really big and I think my stress level with it just wanting it to be done 
since it was a UFO and it was something that I really didn't like in the first place, um, it was probably better that I just, just didn't do it. <laughs> there are some that you just don't. <laughs> Yeah, you could, Peggy. You really could. And one of these days, I'm going to get brave and I'm going to pull out my embroidery machine. It is, Christine, right? It's a great way to finish them. And it's quick and they look beautiful. And yeah, uh, and they last forever. And you know what's cool about them is you can just kind of just kind of toss them and use them for whatever. And you really don't, you don't really get worked up about it because you didn't put a whole lot of work you know, into the, the, the sewing of the quilting of it. Um, but I'm going to show you someday with a, my embroidery machine, how to quilt a quilt. I have done that. I, have, I haven't fully quilted a quilt. I have done it with a baby quilt. Uh, no, Pam, I do it all myself. I wish I had a long arm machine. Someday. Someday I will have a long arm machine down here. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> so now you see why I said no. So just so you guys know, I will not quilt anything bigger than a queen size on this machine here. I have done a queen size. Um, ooh, Beatrice, that'll be pretty. Um, really, Pam? Oh, I actually, I find it to be really quite, um, quite relaxing to free motion. They are cozy. The whole thing is, is that when I'm free motion quilting, I really need to be in the mood to, to free motion quilt. I, if I'm tired, it's a bad time to do it. Um, if I'm frustrated, it's a bad time to do it. So when I free motion quilt, I like to make sure that I have a, a lot of time and I have music on or I have something, a show that I like to watch, like, um, I don't know, Miami Vice <laughs> in the background <laughs> that keeps me really relaxed. And so, um, that's how I, that's how I do it. It's so awesome. Oh yes. Chicago PD. I love that show too. Yeah. Hey Pam, I had a singer confidence sewing machine too. I loved that machine. I made many quilts on it. Many, many quilts. As a matter of fact, I think one of my very first videos here on YouTube, if you look back far enough, like if you go to videos and then go to the oldest one, you'll see my Singer Confidence quilter in there. And I was quilting a big quilt on that. A tequila. <laughs> All right, Becca, thank you for joining us tonight. You have a wonderful night, too. Yes, I did free motion on that. I did, Pam, on it. Yeah. Mm. I want to say the biggest one that I quilted on that was probably, uh, I think it was probably queen size. So, in, and I know that that opening, that throat on that machine is small. So what you have to do is you have to roll it. Oh, I will see if I can find a picture of the quilt that I made for my friend on that. I made her a throw size quilt on the Singer Confidence Quilter. It turned out gorgeous. I'm going to have to look and see if I can find it. Um, I want to say queen size is the biggest that I quilted on it. And what I did with it 
was I broke it down and I did um, quilt as you go. But even when you do quilt as you go, once you start adding those strips, your quilt starts growing and growing and growing and growing. It does help you to, to put it together, but your quilt still eventually gets really, really big. So, but that's how I did it. Yeah, it is fun, huh, Peggy? I liked it too. It just takes a lot of practice and it takes patience. Um, but it, yeah, it definitely can be done. I've mostly made baby quilts on it. And like I said, a throw quilt. I'll have to find that one of my friends. Oh, really? And rent it. Um, I have never rented a long arm. I've not used one. Um, I have sent my quilts out for quilting, but it was a king size quilt. And I did make my daughter, I forgot about this one. I made my daughter a quilt um, when she turned 25. I finished a quilt that I had actually started for her when she was like four. And I was taking clo her clothes and I was cutting them up and it was a sunbonnet Sue quilt. And I made it for her for Christmas. And so I didn't have time to quilt it and I certainly didn't have the patience. And so I sent that one out through our local quilt store and I had that one quilted. I know, same here, Wendy. We've got, I hope so. I hope so, Peggy. The big boys have kind of killed it. They've kind of taken them out of business. They're just, I don't know. Me too. Me too, Peggy. I just have fun with it. Um, we have one here that's not too far from, so there's two of them. So when I say quilt store, so like a sewing machine store that I go to, they actually have fabric there. So I call them a quilt store. And then there is one that's, probably about, I don't know, 30 minutes away from here in town in Broomfield. And um, they have a nice quilt store in there and I still go there too. But for the most part, oh, the big stores have kind of taken over their business. And it's sad. Yes, absolutely, Peggy, stitching the ditches, nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of a bummer, especially because they have I find that the quilt stores, even though I love Joann's, they're, the quality I think is a little different. Yeah, definitely start small. Yep. And it's just a darning foot that should come with your machine, little plastic darning foot. And, um, I would just make sure you drop your feed dogs when you go to free motion quilt. And um, once you get the hang of it, it's it's all about the movement in your hands and how fast you go with the, with the foot pedals. So you have to practice and practice and practice. I would recommend doing something like maybe a table runner or I don't know, just something that you can to do that's a lot of fun no joann's in canada really wow i thought you guys had one up there so what do you guys have in um canada wendy that's like kind of like a joann's do you know what a joann's looks like You're welcome, Pam. If you have any other questions, let us know. Yes, ruler work. 
I still haven't done ruler work. I have the rulers and I have the ruler foot. I'm just not brave enough to try. Actually, that's not true. I did try and I really messed up. Oh, really, Wendy? Not anymore. Yes. Oh, the Bernina stitch regulator. <laughs> so, that's what I originally wanted was a Bernina because of the stitch regulator. And that's what I was going to buy. Spray to keep it in place. Are you talking about 505 spray? for the sandwiching of the quilt, or are you talking about a starch spray? Okay, cool. Gotcha, Wendy. So I was told when I looked at that Bernina for that stitch regulator that if you're really good at free motion quilting already, you probably don't need the stretch regulator. So I did try the stitch regulator. Oh, really? No Hobby Lobby either. Interesting. Do you have Michaels? Um, yeah, it's just different. It's just... You know, because here in the U.S., we think, I think that we kind of think that everybody else has the same stores that we have. And we don't. Okay, so Pam, that's called 505 Spray. And yes, I do use it on my quilts. Um, you don't want to use a whole lot of it because you don't need a whole lot to keep the layers together. I'll show you what the can looks like. Hang on, because I have one actually. Um, there you go, 505 adhesive spray. So, I mean, yeah, it works really, really well. It really does. Nope, it doesn't gum up your machine at all. Not on your needle, not on anything. This one is a good spray to use, but like I said, you don't want to use too much of it because um, if you do, then I, it could possibly gum up your needle, but I never had a problem with this one. Okay, Wendy. So you do have one, Michael's, okay? There is one brand of spray that I did use and it really, really um, gummed up my needle pretty bad. I can't say what it is, but stick with this. <laughs> That's what I will say. Do you still have to pin? Um, That's really a preference. So... I do sometimes still pin with it. If I'm working with a larger quilt and I'm spraying this, yes, I will pin. Just not as much though. I'll just pin in little places like in the center or, you know, around the borders and stuff. Um, if I'm doing a baby quilt, no, no. If I'm using a, just a small, um, a table runner, anything like that, I don't. I won't pin it. It's really good stuff. I think you'll really, really like it. Yeah. Yeah, there's really no need to. I don't think. Like I said, I think it just depends on if you feel like you need to, like if your quilt isn't, if you don't feel like it's laying quite flat or you're afraid it's going to come apart, then you should. I got this uh, 505 at a local quilt store, but I do believe that Joann's online sells this, and I think you can get it on Amazon too. Not positive, but I'm pretty sure you can. Michaels may even sell it, Wendy, but I don't know because I haven't looked there. 
Bye, Deborah. Thanks for joining me. You have a great evening, too. So, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for me tonight. I need to go because I need to go cook dinner. Oh, my goodness. We have been chatting for a very long time. Awesome, Dorothy. Thank you for telling us that. I need to order some more, too, so I should probably look on Amazon. I hope it's not going to take <laughs> four years to get here. <laughs> I hate panning. <laughs> You're welcome, Pam. Yeah, they're not very good. Yeah, don't skip out. Buy the, pay the money and get the 505. That is true. This is one product that you don't want to skimp out on. You really don't. Whoa! Double the price! Holy smokes. Amazon, Wendy. Amazon. <laughs> That's what I would do. Okay, so I'm going to go now, and you guys have a wonderful night, and I'm going to catch you guys probably on Wednesday. So you hang in there because tomorrow I'm going to do a video, and I'm going to put it up. And remember, it takes me a little bit to do the videos, edit, and then, and then get them put up there. So... You guys all be safe. You have a wonderful evening. You have a great day tomorrow. And I'll see you in the middle of the week. I'll see you on hump day. <laughs> Bye, guys.